there's a few things we can do in Smartsheet to draw our team's attention to the things that we really need them to pay attention to, whether that's urgent requests that are coming in or invoices that are past due that need to be paid. Whatever the case may be, we can use conditional formatting in Smartsheet to highlight text, to change the background color of text, and so that way it pops off the screen for someone when they first hit the sheet and take a look at it. Uh, and then that conditional formatting will continue to stay there throughout the life until those conditions are met. And then we can change the formatting again to where it's not so obvious that something needs to be done. Uh, we use this a lot whenever we create sheets for uh, ticketing systems. So when someone submits a ticket and they mark it as urgent, then your team will not only get a notification through the automations, but whenever they come and look at the sheet, that item will be highlighted in a different color than all of the other tickets, drawing your eye straight to that item. And then once that ticket is worked and it's marked complete, we can then remove that ticket um, from the highlight. We can remove the highlight from that ticket and then it falls back into the background with all of the other lines on the sheet. So let's look at conditional formatting in Smartsheet and how we can make that happen. So in this case, we're looking again at our format cells and uh, this is a row that we've created in the past. This is our checkbox column here. And so we're gonna create a conditional format that says when this checkbox column is checked on, we're gonna highlight the background color of this row, the entire row, yellow, to make it really obvious that something needs to happen. Now, your, your checkbox, you can base your conditional formats off of any of your fields. Uh, checkboxes are nice because it's usually an on or off, but you can base it off of dropdowns, text and columns, uh, any of the other field types as well. So first thing we're gonna do is go up here to our conditional formatting icon. So click on conditional formatting and we're gonna add a new rule. This rule here is just, uh, you can see it's grayed out. It's just as an example for you to look at, but we're gonna add a new rule, clicking the button. All right, so the first thing it asks us is if this condition is set. So the condition that we want set, where it's saying when this happens, then we'll highlight something or then we'll change the text or then we'll change the background. So this condition that we wanna, we wanna click on set condition and then we're gonna choose our checkbox column. So our checkbox column has two options. We can either, three options really, we can select all. Um, so when all of these are, are correct or all of these are uh, in play, then it's gonna highlight our item the way we want it to highlight it. But in our case, we're just gonna change it to check. So I'm gonna check my checkbox on. So when my checkbox is checked, then I want it to highlight something. If for some reason you wanted to use this down here, which is apply format when the condition is not met, um, then you can do that as well. So for instance, if, um, if there's something that's, that's in the field and it's a certain name, certain text, and you don't want it to kick off when it is that certain thing, then you can check this. But for now, we're just gonna leave it when this checkbox is checked. Okay, so if the checkbox is checked, then apply this format. So these are our formatting options. We can change the font, we can change the font size, we can bold, italicize, we can change these attributes about the font itself. So everything above this bar here that says taskbar, everything above here is about our individual cell or the cells in that row, which we're gonna select in a second. So we're gonna change our background color. Now it's a slight bit deceiving. Just because this thing's yellow does not mean your background color is gonna to change to yellow just yet. So we have to click the background color and now it's changed to yellow. So we can see that here. Uh, this is kind of a preview of what your cell is gonna look like whenever your conditions are met. So if we wanna change the color, we can drop down that bucket and choose any one of these colors. And then same thing holds true for our text. If we wanted to change the, the text color, we could do that. It's set to automatic even though the bar is red, so just be aware of that. So it's gonna to continue to be black. We're gonna leave it black because we just want the background to be yellow. The taskbar setting down here at the bottom is when we have Gantt charts. So if we have a task list, in our case, this is not a task list, but if we have a task list, a project plan that has start dates and end dates, and we have a Gantt chart associated with it, then we can choose to change the taskbar color down here when this condition is met. This is really helpful whenever you are running up against um, some of your deadlines in your project sheet then you can set the taskbar color to be red or something that stands out uh, to get someone to pay attention to it when that Gantt chart is viewed on your sheet. All right, and the last thing that we're gonna set is whether it's the entire row or we just want it to highlight a single cell. So if we just wanted to highlight a single cell, we could select the column name here and on the row, it would only highlight that one cell. 
But in our case, we're going to select the entire row, so that way it highlights the entire row yellow for us. All right, so once our conditional formatting is done, we're going to say OK. And notice our conditional formatting is not applied because we didn't meet the criteria. The criteria is when this checkbox is checked on. So let's go ahead and check the checkbox on and let's see what happens. So you can see that our entire row gets highlighted. Uh, so it meets all of the criteria for our conditional format. So let's jump back into conditional format and let me show you a couple of different things that you're going to use a lot more often. The first one is if you click this little drop down over here to the, to the left, there's the add condition rule. So in this case, it looks at an and. So if, you guys, if you're familiar with formulas, that you know that we can use the and function in formulas to check if both things are correct. When both things are correct, then it's going to form, it's going to say true, and it's going to continue on with our formula. In this case, it's the same thing. We're saying if a checkbox is checked and I'm going to set my second condition, and when the primary column shows Ryan's sides, then I'm going to say OK. Now, it gave me Ryan's sides because that's what's already listed in the primary column. But if we wanted to define something custom for that column that isn't listed there yet, then I'm going to say define custom criteria. Now we get a few more options. We can say, if we click this drop down, we have contains, we have is greater than or equal to things that we can use whenever we have number formats, is blank or is not blank, is a number or is not a number. In this case, I'm going to say is equal to, or let's say contains the word mark. So for whatever reason, when the primary column changes and the word mark is found inside that cell, and when our checkbox is checked on, then we want it to highlight the background of that row, the entire row, yellow. So you can see right now we don't meet both criteria. We have the checkbox checked on, but we don't have mark in the primary column. So if I were to change this to, then our yellow, we, be, we meet both criteria of our conditional formatting. All right, so let me click on the conditional formatting one more time, show you a couple more things about this left hand drop down. Uh, we can clone the rule, which is basically just copy it and paste it um, to create a different version of it. Duplicate, if you want to use that word as well. We can disable the rule to turn it off, and we can delete the rule if we want to get rid of it altogether. Also keep in mind that the, the hierarchy of your rules matters. So if I have multiple hierarchies, then the higher the, the rule is in the hierarchy, or the higher it is in the list, uh, the more it's going to take precedence over the rows below it. So for instance, let's say I had this rule in place where I'm looking for both mark and the checkbox is checked column. Then I also had one underneath it where I'm looking for mark, the checkbox is checked off, and my contact is me. Then it's going to look at which one comes first in the list to determine which color is going to color that particular row. So keep that in mind as you're creating your conditional formatting. So you can see the value of conditional formatting here. We use it a lot with project sheets uh, to identify certain rows. The, we base conditional formatting off of the status of certain rows or the percentage complete or how close we are to the end date if that row is not complete yet. We can turn that row red. Uh, we also use it for ticketing systems, for new tickets that come in whenever they have an urgent flag that's checked on like our checkbox. Uh, again, we can color those, the backgrounds of those uh, columns. So if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please um, give us a like on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. We've got more videos like these coming out for you as well.